So welcome to uh, tutorial two of unit one uh, on uh, electronic circuits. Now in this particular uh, tutorial, uh, we'll be discussing about some numerical problems uh, pertaining to the clipper circuit and the general diode circuits. Uh, in fact, uh, this tutorial lecture uh, is related to our lecture three and lecture four of electronic circuits. Now to start with, uh, let me consider a simple uh, circuit like this. We have a circuit like this where uh, we do have a, a resistance in series with a diode. And uh, we do have a DC voltage source of battery in series with that. Uh, so the circuit looks something like that. So we'll be taking the output across this diode battery series combination. And uh, let me call this is the ground terminal. So we are applying the input between these two. And the resistance here is uh, 2.2 kilo ohms. And uh, this voltage, this battery is uh, having a voltage of 12 volt. And we are applying one sinusoidal signal at the input of the circuit. Where uh, this is uh, varying from 30 volt to minus 30 volt. So you're applying this signal at the input of the circuit and uh, you need to find out the output signal at this particular junction across these two. So as you know, the, this particular circuit belongs to a wave shaping circuit. And given this particular uh, input signal, which is uh, a pure sinusoidal signal with its peak at uh, 30 volt can be shaped depending upon uh, the connection of the diode and the, the polarity of this particular battery or DC voltage source. Now, first of all, uh, you have to identify the terminals, uh, how the terminals of the diodes are connected in this particular circuit. As you can readily observe, this uh, anode terminal is connected over here at the output terminal and the cathode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And you must be knowing that uh, in order to ensure that the diode starts conducting, the anode to cathode voltage should be greater than zero. Now, initially, uh, I'm considering that the diode is an ideal one. That means if the VAK, the anode to cathode voltage, if it just exceeds uh, zero volt, then uh, the diode can conduct. And later on, uh, I will incorporate the notion of a practical diode where uh, you'll be having a 0 0.7 volt difference between the anode to cathode terminal. Now let's start with uh, the discussion by considering that the diode is ideal one. That means uh, we do have uh, this anode to cathode voltage is equal to zero volt whenever the diode is conducting. And you must be knowing that in order to ensure that the diode conducts, the anode voltage should be slightly greater than the cathode voltage. Now what happens whenever uh, the input signal is at zero volt at the beginning over here, this cathode terminal is having a voltage of 12 volt. So uh, let me write it down uh, what condition we have to satisfy. This anode to cathode voltage VAK must be greater than zero so that the diode is in forward bias condition. And if the VAK is less than zero, then the diode will be in reverse bias condition. If VAK is less than zero, you can also consider equal to zero then forward best for an ideal one. And if VAK is less than zero, then uh, the diode will be in reverse best condition. Now, what happens if the diode is in forward best condition? Now, assuming that the diode is an ideal one, then if the diode is operating in the forward best region, 
then these two terminal, this terminal, this anode and cathode can be considered to be short circuited. So the diode, uh, so if I just uh, draw the symbolic uh, equivalent over here, suppose the diode is connected like this. These are the two terminals, the anode terminal and the cathode terminal. Now in the forward bias, assuming that the diode is an ideal one, So this anode and cathode, they are short circuited simply. So this happens in a forward bias condition and under reverse bias condition, so there is no connection. So the switch is open. So the switch is closed under a forward bias condition and the switch is open under reverse bias condition. So anode to cathode under reverse bias condition. Now, if I once again go back to the basic circuit, you find that uh, if the diode is uh, forward biased, then these two terminals are connected, assuming ideal diode, and the current will flow through this path. And accordingly, uh, you have to identify what about uh, the corresponding uh, potential uh, obtained over here. On the other hand, if the diode doesn't conduct, that means when the diode is reverse biased, then this connection is lost. That means from this output, to this cathode terminal, to the positive terminal of the battery, there is no connection. And as a matter of fact, there is no flow of current through this circuit. Now, if there is no flow of current, then the output voltage will be equal to the input voltage. Because as you can find over here, the input voltage minus the drop across the resistance is equal to the output voltage. If you simply apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, then the output voltage V out is nothing but, so this is uh, the input voltage V in. So this one is the input voltage field in that we're applying over here. So uh, this output voltage is nothing but the input voltage minus the drop across this resistance. Now, if there is no flow of current, if the current through this uh, circuit is equal to zero, then the drop must be also zero. And as a matter of fact, the output will be called to input. Now, this will only happen if the diode is reverse biased. And otherwise, the diode will be in the forward biased and the current will flow. Now let's uh, take a look what happens initially. Now when the input uh, signal uh, starts increasing from the zero volt, uh, now as you can see over here, the cathode terminal is having a voltage of plus 12 and the anode terminal is getting a voltage just higher than zero. So initially, when the input voltage is less than 12 volt, this anode terminal, anode potential is less than the cathode potential. And as a matter of fact, VA is less than zero. So therefore, initially, this diode is under reverse bias condition as long as the input voltage until it reaches a 12 volt mark. So from zero to 12 volt, this diode will be reverse biased and the output voltage will replicate the input signal. So it will follow the input signal from zero to 12 volt. Now what happens beyond 12 volt? Beyond 12 volt, you find that the anode potential is higher than 12 volt and the cathode potential is kept at 12 volt. So then the diode enters into the forward bias region because VAQ will be greater than zero under this condition. And then a current will flow through this path. And since we are assuming the diode is ideal, so from this point to this point, that means from this output terminal to the cathode terminal of the diode, you simply have a short circuited. So there is no voltage drop. So now if you measure the voltage between this terminal with respect to ground, so this is as simple as 12 volt, this 12 volt supply, this DC voltage source, which has been connected over here. Now, as long as the diode conducts, as long as the diode operates in the forward bias region, uh, then this uh, output voltage will be equal to 12 volts. So it will be clipped at 12 volts. So that's what is known as a clipper cycle. So the output voltage will be kept constant at 12 volt as long as the diode is in forward bias. Once again, in the positive half cycle, when the diode, I mean, when the uh, voltage is less than 12 volt, so then you find the diode once again enters into the reverse bias region because th that time this anode potential will be less than the cathode potential. And then the output voltage starts following the input signal. And uh, that is the scenario in the positive half cycle. And what happens in the negative half cycle? You will find that in the negative half cycle, the anode potential is 
negative is always less than zero and the cathode potential is positive that is plus 12 volt so this anode to cathode potential is always negative in the reverse in, in the uh, negative half cycle so that means in the negative half cycle this diode will always be in the uh, reverse bias condition and as a matter of fact uh, in the uh, negative half cycle the output voltage will simply follow the input signal so now if we just uh, if i uh, just uh, draw the input versus output the same scale so uh, this is the time axis now let's consider this is my input signal a pure sinusoidal signal with peak at 30 so this is 30 and this is minus 30 so this is minus 30 so this is input signal v in so this one is the input signal your sinusoidal signal now uh, i am uh, going to show the output uh, with uh, with a green or with a red maybe so what happens from 0 to 12 so if i mark this is my 12 volt mark over here this is 12 volt mark this is plus 12 so between 0 to 12 this diode will be in the reverse best and as a matter of fact uh, this output voltage will simply follow the input signal because there is no flow of current so it will simply follow the input like this and then when uh, the input signal is just above the 12 volt uh, then the diode uh, will be short circuited and the output voltage gets clipped at 12 volt so then you find that uh, it looks something like that it's constant at 12 and then it comes down like this and in the negative half cycle obviously uh, it will follow the input signal. So this is for V out. Okay. Uh, now this entire analysis has been done, uh, assuming that uh, the diode is an ideal one. That means uh, when the diode conducts, this anode to cathode drop is equal to zero volt. Now, if I consider a practical model of diode, in which case uh, uh, you must be having a 0 0.7 volt drive between the anode to cathode. Uh, that means uh, if I have to ensure at least a 0 0.7 volt plus to minus over here, 0 0.7 volt over here, when the diode conducts, uh, then what happens? The only change uh, which will take place over here is that when the diode is conducting, when the diode is in a forward bias region, uh, then the voltage that you are measuring over here, the output voltage will be equal to 12 volt plus the 0 0.7 volt. We have to just add these two uh, voltage sources and because of the polarity here, plus minus and plus minus. So that's why it, uh, these two voltage sources are added, 12 volt plus 0 0.7 volt. So the output voltage will be clipped at 12.7 volt because uh, if I consider a practical model of diode, and then the anode potential must be at least 12.7 volt so that the diode enters into the forward bias and accordingly uh, if i just uh, draw the model over here in the output voltage so for the same input signal so for the same input signal uh, you will find that it's something like that. Although well, it's not pure uh, sinusoidal as far as my drawing goes. Anyway, so let me mark the two axes like this. So this is uh, the axis output voltage for practical diode. And this value is 12.7. And obviously, this peak, negative peak, is obviously kept at minus 30. Now, this one is for, uh, so let me mark, uh, this one is for ideal diode.
and this one is for a, a kind of constant voltage model. If I consider a constant voltage model, then it will be something like that. So now, uh, with this combination, so keeping uh, the input signal fixed at uh, a sinusoidal signal uh, with a peak at 30 volt, 30 to minus 30, and uh, keeping this uh, resistance uh, constant, 2.2 kilo ohms resistance, you must understand what is the need of having this kilo ohms resistance because uh, since uh, the applied uh, input is in the order of uh, few tens of volts, like 30 volt. So, you know, to ensure that the current uh, flowing through the diode uh, be in the range of few milliamperes, so that's why uh, you have selected uh, a resistance value in the range of kilo ohms. So, keeping this uh, input signal fixed and uh, this resistance fixed, now what we can do is we can have four different combinations. So, what we can do is we can just reverse the polarity of the diode and we can also reverse the polarity of this uh, constant voltage source, that is battery. And accordingly, we can have four different types of combinations. So I have shown only one. And let us uh, see what happens with the other three combinations. So we are going to change this, this circuit only, this part only, this part of the circuit, keeping the other parts constant. So uh, let's move to the second one, in which case uh, you have circuit like this. So let's now first. Uh, change the polarity of the diode and uh, DC voltage source is as it was. So same input signal you are applying. So I'm not drawing the input signal again and again. Assume that it's a 30 volt, I mean, 60 volt peak to peak, 30 volt peak, and minus 30 volt here. And uh, we have a 2.2 kilo ohms. So that resistance doesn't matter over here unless you consider the internal resistance of the diode. Anyway, I can put it like 2.2 kilo ohms. And that voltage is 12 volt. And this one is V out. So now this time, what we can find is the anode terminal of the diode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And the cathode terminal is connected over here to the output terminal. So initially, uh, when the input signal is equal to zero volt or just higher than zero volt, under this condition, you will find that the diode will be in the forward bias condition because the anode potential is higher than the cathode potential. So as long as uh, this potential, this input voltage is less than 12 volt, so the anode potential will be higher than the cathode potential. And the diode will be on. Diode will operate in the forward bias region. And as long as the diode operates in the forward bias region, the output voltage is equal to is fixed at 12 volt. So if I just draw over here uh, the input versus output, for a single cycle. So this was uh, my uh, input signal. A sinusoidal signal uh, with peak at 30 volt. So this one is V in. On the same scale, I would like to show this one is minus 30. And on the same scale, I would like to show the corresponding output variation. So initially, when the input starts from, from zero volt, so the cathode potential will be less than the anode potential. And uh, as a matter of fact, what happens? Uh, this diode is in the uh, forward bias region, unlike the previous case. So initially, the diode is forward bias because the cathode potential is less than 12 and the anode potential is fixed at 12. So anode to cathode voltage difference is greater than zero that time. So automatically, 
the diode operates in the forward bias region. And as a matter of fact, you'll find that uh, this uh, output voltage is fixed at 12 volt. Now it will be kept constant at 12 volt unless this potential, this input signal goes above 12 volt. When the input signal just crosses 12 volt, then the cathode potential exceeds anode potential and then the diode cuts off. The diode enters into the reverse bias. Now, if the diode enters into the reverse bias region, so then the flow of current will be immediately stopped and then the output voltage is equal to the input voltage because there is no flow of current, there is no drop across the resistance. So then the output voltage will follow the input voltage. So uh, if I draw uh, the output variation, so suppose this is my 12 volt line. So as long as input voltage is less than 12, so it will be constant like this. And when the input voltage reaches at 12 volt, so then uh, the uh, cathode potential of the, the diode is higher than the anode potential because anode potential is fixed at uh, 12 volt. And uh, I forgot to mention that this is the ground terminal just before. And then you find that it will follow the output. I mean, in output will follow the input as long as uh, the input voltage is greater than 12 because that time the diode is in the reverse bias condition. And once again, uh, when the input voltage is less than 12 volt, then once again, the diode returns back into the forward bias region and the output voltage will be constant at 12 volt. This one is 12 volt. So we are showing both V in as well as V out, both on the same graph. Now this is a scenario with uh, an ideal diode. So let me just mark uh, with the ideal model of diode, this is going to happen. Now, what happens with a with a practical diode or with a constant voltage model whenever you do have a drop? That means you have a drop like this, 0 0.7 volt drop you have to ensure between these two. Now, this time, uh, if you just observe over here, when the diode conducts, last time what you have seen that those two voltages, one was external voltage, that 12 volt battery, and the second one was coming internally because of the diode, that is 0 0.7 volts. Last time, so those two voltage sources, they were added. But this time, if you just observe, you'll find that here, minus to plus and then plus to minus. So obviously, what you find is, these two voltages are not going to be added, rather they're subtracted. So this one is higher. So this is 12 volt minus to plus high as compared to 0 0.7 volt. So 12 volt minus, 0 0.7 volt. So it will be 11.3 volt whenever the diode is conducting or whenever the diode enters into the you know, forward bias region. So uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if I just once again draw uh, a similar kind of graph for a practical diode, I mean for a constant voltage model, So this was my input signal, V in. So the wave shape uh, will remain uh, the same. The only change uh, will take place in the value of this voltage, the voltage at which the output is constant. So instead of 12 volt, now it will be 12 volt minus 0 0.7 volt, that is 11.3 volt. So the almost the same, sorry, I think. So let me just draw it once again. Yeah. So it will be slightly less, but the shape is the same, it's constant at, so, 
constant at 11.3. So this one is 11.3. And this peak is at 30 volt. So both V in as well as V out can be shown on the same graph. And this one is for constant voltage model. Now both for this uh, ideal model and uh, as well as for this constant voltage model, we don't uh, re require uh, the help of this resistance, whether it is 2.2 kilo ohms or 5 kilo ohms or 8 kilo ohms. So uh, this output waveform will be indifferent to the selection of this uh, resistance because this is the only one resistance in the circuit. But if I consider a practical model of the diode, in which case you'll find that the diode uh, is being replaced by means of, or diode is substituted by means of a voltage source in series with a resistance, which is known as the dynamic resistance of the diode. And that value can be like a few tens of ohms. Now that time, uh, that resistance also takes play a proper role in controlling the output voltage. So you don't have this 12 volt or 11.3 volt as simple as that. Rather, uh, the value of this uh, voltage at which uh, the output gets clipped is dependent upon the value of this resistance, the series resistance, as well as the dynamic resistance of the diode. Now, uh, let's move to the third uh, circuit uh, of uh, this particular model. In which case, uh, let's now uh, change the polarity of the battery itself. So, in fact, uh, this is same as the first one, first circuit, but the only change takes place in the polarity of the battery. So now the negative side of the battery is connected to the cathode terminal of the diode. So we're applying a V in between these two point and we have same resistance 2.2 kilo ohms and this one is V out same 12 volt battery. Now here, uh, the situation is a little bit different. Now in the last two cases, we have seen that uh, the diode will be uh, in the forward biased region in the positive half cycle. But this time, you'll find that the cathode terminal is having a negative potential. So that volt is equal to minus 12 volt. And if I just consider the first one, uh, the first uh, example and the second one, you will find that if I just consider the positive half cycle, the diode remains in the forward bias for a particular period of the positive half cycle, not for the internet period. So from this to this, the diode was there in the forward bias for this circuit and for this circuit the diode was in the forward bias when the input signal is less than 12 volt but this time what you find is the cathode terminal is having a voltage of minus 12 and in the positive half cycle the anode terminal is supposed to get a voltage which is positive so for the entire duration of the positive half cycle the diode will be forward bias because anode potential is positive and the cathode potential is negative. So anode to cathode, that drop is obviously greater than zero in the entire duration of the positive half cycle. So therefore, here you find that in the positive half cycle, for the entire duration of the positive half cycle, the diode will be in the forward bias region and the output voltage is equal to minus 12 volt because of the polarity of the DC voltage source. So once again, uh, if I just draw uh, this uh, uh, 
variation of uh, the input and output with respect to time. Here you find this is my input signal, uh, which uh, moves up to plus 30. And here, the negative peak is at minus 30. That is fine. Now, in the entire region of the positive half cycle, the anode potential is greater than zero, and the cathode potential is negative. So, therefore, the anode to cathode that drop, I mean, this anode to cathode voltage is greater than zero. So, therefore, the diode will be in the forward biased, and the output is clipped at minus 12 volt because if you take because if i consider that this terminal is the ground terminal so with respect to this assuming that uh, the diode is an ideal one so in that case this output voltage will be clipped at minus 12. so then uh, the output voltage for the entire duration of the positive half cycle the output voltage will be kept constant at minus 12 like this assuming this is minus 12. Now, what happens when now, in fact, uh, uh, this will be constant to a certain portion of the negative half cycle as well, because as long as this voltage is greater than minus 12, so diode will be in the forward bias. Now, the diode will be cut off when this anode potential, that means when this input voltage goes below minus 12. So when this voltage is less than minus 12, then the diode will be in the reverse bias because this time the anode potential is less than minus 12 and the cathode potential is kept at minus 12. So we have to ensure that the anode potential has to be greater than the cathode potential so that the diode is conducting. So as long as the input signal is greater than minus 12, the diode will be on and the output voltage is equal to minus 12. Now in the negative half cycle, when the diode, when this voltage, input voltage goes below minus 12, then what happens? The diode cuts off and then there is no flow of current. And then you find that the output voltage is equal to the input voltage. And then this output voltage starts following the input voltage like this. It will follow the input voltage like this. And then ultimately, whenever once again, uh, this input voltage goes above minus 12 volt, then once again, it will be kept constant. So this one is the output signal. So this one is the output signal. Now, once again, I have to mention that uh, this particular waveform has been generated assuming the ideal model of diode. Now what happens if uh, the diode, uh, if, if I assume that uh, the constant voltage model is uh, or has to be applied. So under this case, uh, once again, you have to identify the difference, say plus to minus it is 0 0.7 volt. Now when the diode conducts, obviously these two voltages will be added but depending upon the polarity, uh, it will be minus 12 plus 0.7 because plus minus and minus plus. So you have to observe the polarity over here. So plus minus minus plus. So we cannot add algebraically, but you have to add with a negative sign. Or in other words, we have to subtract. So when the diode conducts, so instead of having a minus 12 volt over here, you will be having a minus 11.3 volt. So this one is for the practical, I mean, for constant voltage model. For constant voltage model. Uh, so if I just draw the input signal by means of a dotted curve, this one was input. and uh, the output voltage will be something like that.
So it will continue like this. So this is minus 11.3 volt. And this gold one is the output voltage. And uh, this has been obtained with a constant voltage model. So uh, three combinations have been shown. So only one is left. So let's now move to the to the fourth one, the fourth circuit. So only one combination is left. So here uh, we are just changing the battery position with respect to the second uh, circuit. So this one is the input signal you're applying between these two terminals. You have a resistance of say 2.2 kilo ohms same 12 volt battery and you need to measure the output voltage here. Now this time you will find that just the opposite case of what you have uh, found in uh, the last example. Here you find that the anode terminal is having a potential of minus 12 volt and the cathode terminal is connected to the output terminal. Now in the positive half cycle this potential, I mean the input voltage will be always greater than zero. So cathode is receiving a voltage higher than zero and anode is having a voltage that is minus 12, negative voltage. So anode to cathode, that difference we just considered, so VAK is less than zero in the positive half cycle. So therefore, uh, in the positive half cycle, for the entire duration of the positive half cycle, this combination, uh, I mean this circuit doesn't carry any current. So therefore, on the output signal will simply uh, replicate the input waveform. So I think it will be better to draw this one with respect to so this is V. Anyway, let me just erase that part. Yeah, it's better to draw this input by means of a dotted line. So this one was the input V in with peak at 30 volt. And in the positive half cycle, what happens? This, uh, this potential is always greater than zero and uh, anode potential is equal to minus 12. So the diode doesn't conduct. So the output voltage follows the input. So what we can do is we can just join them up like this. That's fine. So this is the output voltage during the positive half cycle. Now what happens in the negative half cycle? Now the diode will remain in the reverse bias condition as long as this potential, as long as this potential is less than minus 12. So what we find is here in the positive half cycle, the output will be replicated by the input signal and this will be continued as long as this voltage is greater than minus 12. So as long as, so let me mark this is uh, the minus 12 line. Suppose this is minus 12 volt. So as long as this potential, this potential is greater than minus 12, the diode will remain in the reverse bias and the output will follow the input. It will follow the input up to this point. Beyond this point, when this potential input voltage 
goes below minus 12, then you find that the anode potential is having a voltage. Anode uh, terminal of the diode is having a voltage of minus 12, and the cathode terminal is having a voltage which is less than minus 12. Then the diode enters into the forward bias. And if the diode enters into the forward bias, uh, this diode will be simply replaced by means of a short circuited path. And if you measure uh, the voltage with respect to by means of multimeter, then that voltage will be equal to simply minus 12 volt. So it gets clipped at minus 12 like this. Let me just uh, clear this up. Yeah. it will be minus 12. And once again, uh, in the negative half cycle, whenever uh, this potential, this input voltage goes above minus 12, then the diode uh, comes back from the forward bias and enters into the reverse bias, and uh, the input and output will be the same. So the output voltage looks something like that, assuming the ideal model. So I have to mention once again, it's an ideal model. Now what happens with constant voltage? Now you know that for constant voltage, you have a plus minus 0 0.7 volt. That means the anode voltage must be greater than the cathode voltage by at least 0.7 volt so that the diode can conduct. So for the practical one, uh, we can show the variation almost the same. I mean, the variation will be the same, uh, but uh, the value of uh, the voltage at which uh, the input waveform gets clipped, it's different. Now here you see that whenever the diode conducts, so then uh, you have a 0.7 volt drop here and 12 volt drop here. Now if you just check the polarity, plus minus, plus minus. So they are added together. And as a matter of fact, if I just uh, draw the input versus output, so let's assume that this is my input signal, although it doesn't uh, look good anyway. So this one is my input signal, and this one is the output. Now this peak is kept at 30 volt. And this voltage is equal to minus 12.7, minus 12.7 volt. If I assume that a constant voltage model. Constant voltage model. And now, uh, with a, a single uh, circuit, I would like to uh, explain what happens with practical diode model. Uh, in fact, the same thing will be applied for the other circuits as well. So let me select the first one, first circuit. What happens with the practical diode model? We have a diode like this. Let me once again uh, refer back to the first circuit that we have discussed in this class. So we are applying the input signal between these two. We have raised, now the value of the resistance uh, is of importance. So 2.2 kilo ohms. We have a 12 volt battery over here. And we are now considering the practical diode model. So what do you mean by the practical diode model? So a practical diode model, uh, I can assume that uh, the resistance offered by the diode under reverse bias condition is pretty large, ideally infinite. So the diode can be visualized by means of an open circuit in reverse bias condition. That is fine. And in forward bias condition, the diode can be visualized by means of a constant voltage of say 0 0.7 volt as we are assuming a silicon diode over here. For other types of diode, the cut-in voltage will be different. If I consider germanium diode, it will be 0 0.3 volt or so. 
So assuming that it's a silicon diode, so we have a 0 0.7 volt. So that is for a constant voltage model. But apart from that, if I assume that uh, the diode is practical one, then uh, you need to identify, you need to connect the dynamic resistance of the diode. So let it be say, let, let me consider this resistance equal to say 10 ohms, for example. So that value is very small. Let's assume that that value is like 10 ohms. In fact, that volt, I mean, that resistance also changes with respect to the input signal. So let me assume that it is it is kept constant at 10, 10 ohms or might be say 50 ohms, for example. So let's assume that it's 50 ohms. Let's assume that uh, this value called 50 ohms. 50 ohm resistance. So once again, uh, if you can remember uh, what we got, the waveform, it was something like that. The output waveform will look something like that. It was like this. So whenever uh, the diode is uh, in reverse bias condition, I'm assuming that uh, uh, the reverse bias resistance provided by the diode is pretty large, infinite, ideally infinite. So uh, there will be hardly no flow of current. And therefore, uh, this uh, input signal will uh, be equal to the output signal. So obviously, uh, that value uh, will be the same. I mean, uh, this fluctuation will be the same when the diode is in the reverse bias region. Now, what happens? If the input voltage is uh, greater than 12.7 volt, then obviously the diode enters into the uh, forward bias region. And in the forward bias region, so far we have neglected uh, this, uh, diode, this resistance of the diode. Although small, we have neglected that part. But now we cannot neglect this part. So therefore, what we have is, so now the circuit uh, gets modified like this. So now you have a circuit like this. Now, that is the scenario in the region when the diode is in the forward bias region. That means we are interested in, in that part whenever the output voltage gets clipped. But remember, the output voltage will cannot be considered to be constant because now uh, you have uh, this diode can be replaced by means of a battery of 0 0.7 volt with a resistance in series and then you have another uh, battery that is the external one dc voltage so you have a 0 0.7 volt here you have plus minus 12 volt here and you have 50 ohms resistance here and you have 2.2 kilo ohms resistance 2.2 kilo ohms resistance here so now the circuit gets modified like this So this is the output terminal, V out. And you are applying the input here. So during the positive half, during the positive half cycle, so there is a provision for the circuit to supply some current, because as you understand in the negative half cycle, uh, the diode will be in the reverse bias because the anode is having some negative voltage and cathode is having some positive voltage. So in the negative half cycle, uh, the diode will be in the reverse bias. So there is no flow of current ideally. But in the positive half cycle, during that region, when the input voltage gets clipped at 12 volt or 12.7 volt, but this time that voltage is not constant. So you can't expect that uh, this output voltage gets clipped at some fixed voltage. Now, in order to answer this question, uh, what you need to do is that you have to identify what is the current that is flowing. Let me assume that the current is I, and then you can uh, simply find out what is the value of this I. That is very simple. Uh, uh, you can just observe here uh, what is the voltage that is 12 volt here 0.7 volt so they are in the same uh, polarity added so they will be added plus minus and plus minus so you have a 12.7 volt here so v in minus 12.7 so if i just calculate the amount of current what is the value of i so this i is nothing but you have v in minus 12.7 that's fine divided by the total resistance that is 2.2k plus 50 ohms 
So in fact, that value is uh, very much close to 2.2K because uh, the diode resistance is uh, very small with respect to the externally connected resistance. So now uh, that value, if we just consider uh, this 2.2 kilo ohms plus 50 ohms, it will be pretty much close to 2.2 kilo ohms. But if you are accurate enough, then you can find out what is the exact value for the current. Now, once you get this value, obviously uh, the current will be in the range of few uh, milliamperes because uh, uh, this uh, denominator is uh, in the order of kilo ohms and you have volt uh, in the numerator. So the current will be some milliampere. Once you find out the amount of current, then what happens is you can easily find out the output voltage. So that output voltage is no longer constant at 12.7 volt. Rather, you have to identify the uh, contribution because of the flow of current. Now, as the current flows through this 50 ohms resistance, so there will be another voltage drop across this 50 ohms resistance. So, and uh, this will be in this direction plus minus. So now the output voltage is having three different uh, uh, components. So initially, when we consider the ideal model of the diode, then this 0 0.7 volt and this 50 ohms. So both of them are absent. Only 12 volt was there. So that's why the output gets skipped at 12 volt. When you consider the constant voltage model, then this 12 volt as well as the 0 0.7 volt. So both of them are coming into the picture. So that's why 12.7 volt only. But this time, if I just consider simple uh, a small resistance uh, associated with the diode, and uh, if I just observe the polarity, and so here also you find that plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, the current will flow in this direction because this potential is higher with respect to this potential. So current will flow in this direction. So now V out is given by 12.7 plus. So now you can what you can find is uh, right. uh, V out can be equal to can be made equal to 12.7, that is fine, plus this current I into 50 ohms. I into 50 ohms. And in fact, uh, that value, if I just consider, uh, because the current that is flowing through, the, through this uh, series combination is mainly governed by this 2.2 kilo ohms. But if you are uh, accurate enough, uh, then you have to find out uh, the exact value of the current. And uh, you have to measure the drop across this resistance. Because uh, the current uh, flowing in this particular circuit is in the range of few milliamperes. And the amount of the resistance is also very small, 50 ohms. So overall, a voltage drop will be in the range of few millivolts or so because ohms multiplied with uh, milliampere current, so it will be millivolts with respect to 12.7 volt. So that value can be neglected to some extent, but if you are accurate enough, then uh, you have to ensure that as the input voltage increases, as the input voltage increases beyond 12 volt, the amount of current in the circuit is also increasing by virtue of this formula, because I is equal to V in minus 12.7 upon 2.2K plus 50 ohms. So as the input voltage increases beyond 12 volt, this current will also increase. And as a matter of fact, the drop across this 50 ohms resistance will also increase. So therefore, you don't have a flat type of output over here. Rather, there will be variation, but that variation will be pretty small. Uh, I mean, that variation can be like something like this. So it will be very small. So you don't have a flat type of thing. So some variation will be there. And you can also find out what will be the peak value of the output voltage. So obviously, the peak of output voltage will happen when the input voltage reaches at its peak. That means when the input voltage is at 30 volt. So when the input is at 30 volt, so uh, let me have some uh, calculation for this. What I can show okay. you. Yeah, any doubt? Uh, sir, the V out is basically across a resistor, right? No, V out is across uh, this, I mean, across like, these two. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, basically, there's a resistor there across which we are uh, 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 like taking the V out. Not only the resistor, we, we, you have a resistance. Apart from that, you have uh, two voltage sources, like 12 no, volt. Sir, and not, so. not that, sir. Uh, the, specifically, the V out. Uh, across which device shall we take V out? Oh, so across the you resistor, are taking right? so, uh, yeah. Let me let me tell you. So every time you are taking so 
considering this as the out, this as the ground terminal. So you are always taking V out with respect to this terminal, and you are measuring the potential at this point. Potential at this point with respect to ground. So you have to take all these three components into account. This resistance, 50 ohms, is 0 0.7 volt. This 12 volt. So let me just let me go to the next slide, and I can show you what happens is uh, you have sir yeah sir in case of the uh, means the actual uh, real diode model so sir uh, the circuit will yeah. still be called as clipper circuit because at the uh, because the voltage is not clipped no uh, it's not actually called clipper rather you can call it like an of shaping circuit it's not clip it's not constant no? yes sir but that will i can show you that value that variation is very small so that can be neglected to some extent okay so this is the output terminal so you have a plus minus 0.7 50 ohms for example and another 12 volt here and 2.2k and you're applying the input between these two terminals so when the input is at its peak so when v is equal to 30 volt then what is the current that is flowing so the current uh, as you know 30 minus 12.7 divided by 2250 so let me just calculate the value uh, 30 minus 12.7 will give me 17.3 in the numerator. Give me 17.3 in the numerator. Thirty minus 12.7 will give me 17.3 in the numerator. Divided by 2250. So 17.3 divided by 2250 will give me a current uh, in the range of 7.68. So let it be say 7.7. 7.7 milliampere amount of current. So 7.7 milliampere is the peak current when the input signal is at 30 volt. So now if you calculate the output voltage, so output voltage is calculated at this particular node. So we are measuring this potential at this point with respect to the ground terminal. So you can do it uh, in two ways. Uh, either uh, you find it like V in minus the current flowing through this resistance, I mean the drop across the resistance. So uh, you can uh, calculate this one. V out to be like this V in minus the voltage drop across this resistance. Or what you can do is that will be the simpler one. This 12.7 plus the voltage drop across this 50 ohms resistance. So you have a 12.7 volt, that is fine. Plus uh, this 7.7 uh, .7 milliampere. 7.7 milliampere. So it is minus 3 into 50, 50 ohms. So this much volt. So let me just check what is the value you are getting. 7.7 .7 into 50 divided by 1000 will give me 0 0.385 so 12.7 plus 0.385 so 12.7 plus 0 0.385 so ultimately that value is coming like 13.085 volt so now if you just uh, consider the input and the output so when the input is at uh, 30 volt then you find that the output is at only 13 volt, 13 point something, so roughly 13 volt. So uh, it's not fixed. So uh, what I can show you here, only the positive half cycle, only the positive half cycle I can show you, uh, because as you know, in the negative half cycle, the uh, output will follow the input. So uh, let me call uh, this one was like an input signal, V in, and what about the output? So as long as the input is less than 12.7, so it will be 
reverse bias the right will be reverse bias so therefore it will follow the input the output will follow the input and it will be up to 12.7 and then it will and that value that peak might be so let me just um, yeah this one is something and when the input is at its peak then the output will be having a different slope so that slope is not zero non zero slope but very small okay so let me just mark this one this one is 12.7 that is fine 12.7 volt assuming this is to be at ground zero and that peak if i just observe this peak and this variation i mean that peak you can measure just sorry that peak when the input is at 30 volt now that peak is at 13.085 volt so if i just if i just uh, zoom in that part so previously you have a clipper output like this and now now this one with the constant voltage model constant voltage model now with the practical model as the current as the input signal increases as you find as the input increases uh, the uh, current uh, through the circuit also increases here and the drop across the resistance also increases last time also as the uh, input increases the current through the circuit increases but there was no resistance in this part so now it will be like this only slight variation you can expect so this one is with practical model considering all the a uh, non idealities that uh, one can impose into a diode model that means a battery in series with a diode resistance so very briefly i have uh, shown you uh, what happens with a practical model as well so now uh, from this uh, type of uh, diode circuits now uh, let's move to a different type of diode circuits in which case uh, this uh, diode and the battery combination will be there in the series path so it will not be there across the output terminal and let's put the the resistance uh, across the output terminal so what you are going to do is so so far uh, if i just consider uh, all these uh, four defined circuits so what you find is you have a resistance over here and you have some diode and uh, uh, dc voltage source across the output terminal so it was the connection so now let's change the connection now let's make this diode battery combination let's put this diode battery combination in this path in series path and let's put the resistance uh, across across this output terminal and once again i can have uh, four such uh, different uh, circuits so let's start with the very uh, the first one and this time let's change uh, uh, the potential so now let's make it like uh, um let's make it like input signal to be having a variation from plus 10 to minus 10 and the battery voltage is say, say 3 volt so now battery and the diodes so now they are in this path like this and you have a resistance in this path so here i am assuming that uh, the input signal is a sinusoidal signal uh, with uh, the variation is the variation is of 20 volt that means plus 10 minus 
that is the signal that you are applying with respect to this ground terminal assume that uh, this is the resistance of say 1k you are measuring the output across the resistance so now you are measuring the output across this resistance 1k okay and uh, this is a battery of say 3 volt let's start with the ideal diode model what happens now once again you have to uh, identify uh, whether uh, in the positive half cycle whether the diode is in the forward biased or in the reverse biased condition but now the analysis will be something different now if the diode is reverse biased condition if the diode doesn't conduct last time what you have found is since the diode was there in the in this path across output terminal so in that case if the diode doesn't conduct and then the output voltage will be called to simply the input voltage if you can remember if i just consider this circuit for example if the diode doesn't conduct then the output voltage is equal to the input voltage because there is no flow of current so output voltage is equal to the input voltage but for this type of circuits uh, the analysis will be something different so if the diode doesn't conduct so what happens is you have basically an open circuit from this point to the output terminal so there is no connection however this output terminal is connected to ground through this 1k resistance so therefore if the diode doesn't conduct so then there is no flow of current and you are measuring the output voltage as the voltage drop across this 1k resistance so the current that is flowing through the circuit multiplied with 1k will give you the output voltage now if the diode doesn't conduct if there is an open circuit over here so obviously there is no flow of current through this resistance and the output voltage will be equal to 0 volt because there is no flow of current through the resistance 1k and therefore there is no voltage drop across the resistance so therefore this potential and this potential must be the same now that happens when the diode is under reverse bias condition now when the diode is under forward bias condition you have to see what is happening now let's start with uh, the input signal like this uh, what i can do here yeah. uh, let me let me show you uh, with the dotted line i think that will be better so this is the input pattern now initially what you find is the anode potential is equal to 0 volt because there is no flow of current so the anode potential is equal to 0 volt is that ground potential what about the cathode potential now the cathode for cathode terminal is having the summation of two signal one is because of this dc source and the second one is because of this sinusoidal signal so the signal that is available at the cathode terminal is the summation of these two this input signal which is having a variation from plus 10 to minus 10 plus this 3 volt battery and remember the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the cathode terminal so we have this cathode potential what we can write is uh, the cathode potential vk is equal to the input signal minus 3 volt v in minus 3 because the cathode terminal is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so when the input signal is at zero over here so the cathode potential is how much cathode potential is equal to minus 3 0 minus 3 anode potential is how much that is zero so diode will be conducting so diode will be conducting and as a matter of fact this output voltage is equal to this cathode potential because now i am assuming that the diode is an ideal one so cathode to anode drop is equal to zero so vk will be equal to v out so what i can write is vk is equal to v out when the diode is forward biased 
that means v a k drop is zero so only you need to do is that you have to measure the potential at this point and since there is no drop here so output voltage is given by this one only so as long as this potential this cathode potential is less than zero volt as long as it is negative the diode will be on and accordingly the output voltage is equal to the input voltage minus 3 volt so what happens is that here you find there is a dc shifting so there is a simply dc shifting so output voltage will be equal to v in minus 3 volt so when the input is at minus uh, input is at zero the output starts from minus 3 and when the input reaches at plus 3 somewhere over here suppose this is my plus 3 point this is 10 volt this is plus 10 volt and this is say plus 3 volt so when the input voltage is at 3 volt so at this point the output should be equal to 0 and then you have a dc shifting this is minus 3 so when the input is 0 output is minus 3 when the input is uh, 1 the output will be minus 2 when the input is 2 the output will be minus 1 and when the input is 3 the output will be 0 so up to this point the diode will be on because the anode potential is higher than the cathode potential or in other words the anode potential is 0 and the cathode potential is negative so it will be something like that now what happens beyond this point now beyond this point you find this cathode potential is now greater than zero minus three suppose uh, if we uh, assume that uh, this potential the input signal just exceeds three volt so essentially what uh, equivalent voltage the cathode of the diode is receiving minus three volt here and plus the input voltage now if the input voltage exceeds this three volt so then this cathode potential will be higher than zero just greater than zero and assuming the ideal diode model and since the anode of the diode is connected to ground through this resistance so therefore the diode will enter into the reverse bias region now when the diode enters into the reverse bias region as i mentioned uh, previously uh, the output voltage will be short circuited through this path and the output voltage will be constant at zero volt so this is uh, this will be constant like this so it will be zero volt let me just uh, a bit Okay, fine. So, so this will continue. This will continue as long as the cathode potential is greater than zero volt. Now, once again over here, you find that the cathode potential is exactly equal to zero. And then beyond this point, whenever the input voltage goes below three volt, then the cathode potential will be less than the anode potential and once again the diode starts conducting and the input voltage minus 3 volt will be equal to your output voltage so ultimately what you have is beyond this point you have a fluctuation like this although it doesn't uh, look good anyway the variation so let me just mark this point what happens when the input is at negative peak when the input is at minus 10 then uh, this cathode potential is at minus 10 minus 3 that is minus 13. so you have to identify another point over here suppose uh, this one is minus 10 this one is minus 10 and let me mark this point as minus 13 let's this be minus 13 volt so when the uh, input signal is at its negative peak uh, then the output will be at minus 13 and it will continue as it is when the input signal is at zero now this one will be at minus 3 just like this 
I think I have to uh, go on the circuit. I mean, it will be uh, easier to visualize uh, this one, the waveform of the circuits so whenever you apart from some circuit simulation, hopefully uh, it was there uh, in your syllabus, in the computing software lab, where you can visualize the output waveform by using the SPICE model. Anyway, so when the input is at minus 10, the output will be at minus 13. And when the input is at zero, the output will be at minus three. So this is the pattern. So this one is output signal P out. Now what happens for a practical diode? So what I've shown, this one is for the ideal diode. I mean, if I just consider the constant voltage model. So for constant voltage model, uh, you have to consider there should be a 0 0.7 volt drop. And therefore, uh, so this one is for ideal model, ideal model. And uh, this V out is equal to V in minus three as before. And you have plus minus then minus plus. So plus minus and minus plus. So plus different. It will be zero point plus zero point seven. That means V in minus two point three volt. This one is for constant voltage model. Constant voltage model. So therefore, for constant voltage model, you have the same type of wave shape, the only difference takes place uh, in the value. Instead of having a value of minus three, over here, uh, that value will be at minus 2.3. So it will start from minus 2.3, and uh, here, uh, the negative peak will be obtained at minus 12.3 volt. So this one is for the constant voltage model. Now, uh, let's move to the, obviously, uh, we have to consider the other uh, topology of this particular generic circuit. So keeping the resistance uh, value fixed, uh, what I need to do is that I have to change the polarity of the diode and uh, the polarity of the DC voltage source. So let us let me let me just change the polarity of the diode first. That means uh, on the cathode terminal now, let us connect the cathode terminal to the output terminal and the anode terminal to the uh, negative terminal of the battery. Okay. So, so now the circuit uh, looks something like that. And uh, the anode is connected to this. So you're measuring with respect to this. So once again, you have a three volt battery. Uh, 1k resistance, this one is V out, 1k resistance, and you have input like this, plus 10 to minus 10. So now here we find that the cathode terminal is connected to ground through a 1k resistance. What about the anode? Now anode is having a voltage that is equal to, so here, this anode potential VA, if I write, this anode potential is nothing but, so negative terminal of the battery is connected to the anode. So obviously, it will be like V in minus three volt. So this is the anode term, this is the anode potential. And if the diode conducts, 
uh, then the output voltage V out is equal to uh, the cathode potential that is VK that is equal to VA. Now this happens when diode is forward biased. And obviously, we are assuming here the uh, the ideal model of the diode. Obviously, that model we are considering here is the ideal model. Otherwise, VK cannot be equal to VA unless uh, we are considering the ideal model of the diode. So, what happens uh, initially uh, when the input voltage is at zero volt? When the input voltage is at zero volt, here you find the anode potential. So I'm just let me just uh, draw the uh, I mean waveform first, so that you can identify. So the input uh, waveform looks something like that. Now, when the input voltage is at zero volt, what about the anode potential? The anode potential is zero minus there is minus three volt. And what about the cathode potential? That is zero volt. So what about the status of the diode? So the diode will be reverse biased. Now, since the diode is reverse biased, as I mentioned previously, the output voltage will be simply equal to zero volt. And accordingly, uh, this is going to happen this is peak, this is at 10. This is going to happen as long as the input voltage doesn't cross the three volt mark. So if I mark this three volt over here, so as long as the input voltage is less than three volt, so the anode potential will be negative and the diode is off, diode is reverse biased. And as a matter of fact, this uh, output voltage will be zero volt. Now, when the input voltage uh, is uh, greater than three volt, then you find that the output voltage, I mean, the diode will be forward best. If the input voltage is greater than three volt, the diode will be forward best. And the output voltage is given by this equation. This is V minus three volt. So when the input uh, reaches at uh, 10 volt, the output will be at 10 minus three, that is seven volt. So the fluctuation, so the variation is something like that. I have to yes, because I have to draw in the proper scale. Let's assume this is 0 0.7. Yes, sorry, seven volt. Yeah. So uh, this will be at. This is seven volt, as you can understand. And whenever uh, the input voltage goes below three volt, once again, the diode enters into the reverse bias region. That's fine. And what happens in the negative half cycle? In the negative half cycle, obviously, the input voltage is negative. So and the anode potential will be always negative. Something minus negative, something minus three. And that something is always negative. So the anode potential is always negative in the negative half cycle. <clears throat> so there is no question for the diode to remain in the forward bias region in the negative half cycle. So in the negative half cycle, you can expect that uh, this will be constant throughout and it's kept to zero volt. So this is the output voltage as you can observe. So V out has been drawn uh, with uh, this green uh, color. So that is for the ideal model. Once again, uh, what happens for the practical model? So for practical model, the only change we need to do is that, I mean, for the uh, constant voltage model. So now you have another 0 0.7 volt here. So for the practical model, uh, what you have is so you find uh, this anode potential is equal to obviously V in minus three. That's fine. What about the 
output. This output is nothing but the cathode potential. That is VK. So that VK is nothing but VA minus VAK. And VAK is 0 0.7 volt for the constant voltage model. So you have what you can see is plus minus plus minus. So it will be added simply. So V in minus 3.7 volt. So this one happens with constant voltage model. V in my, v, uh, v out will be equal to V in minus 3.7 volt. So the only change, uh, what you can expect over here is in the peak. So you find that as long as uh, this input signal exceeds 3.7, the output will, uh, I mean, the output will remain clipped at zero volt. And when the input signal just exceeds 3.7, uh, then the output starts following the input. Obviously there is a DC shifting and the peak is obtained at uh, 10 volt minus uh, 3.7 volt, that is 6.3 volt. So for the constant voltage model, uh, this uh, peak will be obtained at 6.3 volt. And so now let's move to the remaining two. Yeah. So now let's do one thing. Let's now let's consider the first circuit and uh, let's now uh, change the position of uh, the battery itself. Polarity of the battery. So the circuit is something like this. Minus plus three volt. Input is applied between these two. You have a diode here, one K resistance here and measuring the output across the resistance. Now here you find the anode terminal is having a voltage equal to is connected to zero volt to the ground through this resistance. And the cathode initially is having a voltage that is plus three volt. So in the positive half cycle, obviously this cathode potential is always greater than the anode potential. For the entire duration of the positive half cycle, this cathode potential will be greater than the anode potential and therefore the diode doesn't conduct in the positive half cycle. Uh, so uh, let me just show, let me just uh, show you the graph pertaining to the input waveform. Looks like this. And in the positive half cycle, the diode cannot conduct because the cathode potential is always greater than the anode potential because you have some three volt here plus some positive voltage. So cathode is always greater than the anode. So that cannot conduct and if the diode cannot the obviously the output voltage will be kept fixed at zero volt because there is no flow of current so this this circuit is uh, so there is no flow of current uh, this diode can be replaced by means of uh, an open switch so uh, v out is equal to zero zero volt. so it looks something like that and uh, it will be continued as long as the diode is in the reverse bias region now the diode enters into the forward bias region whenever the input signal goes below minus three. So whenever the input signal goes below minus three, then the effective voltage that you are receiving at the cathode terminal will be negative. And that time only the diode enters into the forward bias region. So uh, let's, let me just uh, show you this, this line. Suppose this is my minus three volt line. This is minus three. This is 10. So as long as it is less than minus three, as long as it is uh, greater than minus three, 
obviously the diode will not conduct and when the input voltage is less than minus 3 then obviously the diode will conduct and if the diode conducts then what is the equation so if the diode conducts you find the cathode potential is equal to the input signal plus 3 volt and so as the anode potential in constant voltage model so v out will be equal to va that is equal to v in plus 3 so whenever uh, the input signal is at its negative peak that means whenever the input signal is at minus 10 then what about the output the output is nothing but minus 10 plus 3 that is minus 7 volt so sorry one thing let me mark this point as well and this is the peak and the peak is at minus 7 anyway i think you understand what is the meaning of that so that value is minus 7 minus 7 volt and this one is the output now this graph is for ideal model of the diode and with the constant voltage model what happens is with the constant voltage model you have to uh, obviously consider this uh, 0.7 volt drop so this one is for ideal model of the diode and vk is equal to v in plus 3 that is fine always but v out is equal to va that is equal to vak minus vk vak minus vak plus vk vk plus vk that is equal to you have v in plus 3.7 volt that you can also verify uh, from the graph itself from the circuit itself you have a minus plus here and another minus plus here so it will be added together so 3.7 so v in plus 3.7 will be equal to v out whenever the diode is conducting and obviously uh, this happens in the under the constant voltage model under constant voltage model this happens and therefore uh, whenever uh, we are assuming that the constant voltage model is acting so then uh, if the input voltage is at its negative peak at minus 10 uh, then the output voltage will be uh, minus 10 plus 3.7 that means it will be at a uh, minus 6.3 volt instead of minus 7 volt it will be at minus 6.3 volt and accordingly uh, it will be constant at 0 volt as long as the input voltage is greater than minus 3.7 volt if the input voltage is less than minus 3.7 volt then only the diode starts conducting okay so now we have uh, only one uh, circuit left in this particular category now compared to the previous circuit what you can do is uh, we can simply change the polarity of the diode so i know this one is 1k resistance you have a 3 volt battery here 
and the input signal is applied between these two terminals. So here you find uh, this uh, anode terminal is having a voltage of three volt plus three volt here. Cathode is connected to ground through this resistance. And therefore, in the positive half cycle, you must understand that the ideal conduct for the entire duration of the positive cycle. And apart from that, a portion of the negative half cycle, the ideal conduct, as long as this anode potential is greater than zero volt. So as long as the anode potential is greater than zero volt, the diodal conduct. And obviously, uh, in the entire duration of the positive half cycle, uh, the diodal definitely conduct because there you find that uh, in the positive half cycle, the input voltage is, I think, a little bit better if I just uh, increase the amplitude to some extent uh, for the sake of visibility. So in the uh, positive half cycle, uh, since the input signal is positive and uh, the anode potential is uh, input signal plus three volt. So obviously uh, this uh, diodal conduct in the positive half cycle and uh, what happens, uh, this anode potential here is nothing but V in plus three volt. And the cathode potential is equal to V out. That is equal to V in plus three volt. And obviously this is under constant voltage model. Sorry, this is under ideal model of the diode. So this is with the ideal diode model. Because this VAK is considered to be zero. So therefore, uh, whatever be the input signal you're getting, the output voltage will be three fold higher as compared to the input. So if I just draw the output, so let me mark this as 10 volt, this as 10. So the output voltage will be higher than the input because the input is equal to output minus three, output is equal to input plus three. So when the input is at zero, output will be at three. So the input starts from three and reaches its peak at 13. You have a sinusoidal waveform like this. I think I could change this one once again, yeah. And it will continue this one. This nature will be continued as long as the input signal is greater than minus three. So if I mark this as minus three, if this is the minus three point, minus three volt. So as long as input signal is greater than minus three, so when the input signal is at minus three, then the output will be at zero. And then the diode stops its conduction. And then when the input signal uh, goes below minus three volt, then obviously this anode potential will be now less than zero volt and the cathode potential is zero volt. So obviously the diode will be off. There's no flow of current and the output is kept constant at zero. This will continue as long as the input signal is less than minus three. And when the input signal is higher than minus three, then also uh, the output will be equal to input plus point, input plus three volt. So here you find this peak is at 13 volt. So for a 10 volt uh, peak for the input signal, this will be at 13 volt. And this is the ground line that is zero volt. Now what happens with the constant voltage model? Uh, 
the same uh, change you have to perform over here. Over here you have a 0 0.7 volt. You check minus plus plus minus, so it will be just the reverse. So what you can do is under constant voltage model VK that is equal to V out here is given by VA minus VAK. That means uh, V in minus V in plus three volt minus zero point seven. That means V in minus sorry V in plus two point three volt. So for the constant voltage model, uh, this output signal, which is obviously the cathode potential of the diode, is given by the anode potential of the diode over here. And since the diode is conducting, so minus this drop, VAK drop, VA minus VAK. So V in plus 3, minus 0.7. So you can also verify the expression from the circuit itself, minus to plus here and plus to minus here. So V in plus 3, minus 0.7 it will give you a V in plus 2.3. And this happens with the constant voltage model. So what happens is uh, when the input signal is at zero, uh, then the output starts from 2.3 instead of 3 volt. So there will be DC shifting of uh, amount equal to 2.3 volt. And when the input signal reaches at uh, its peak, that is at 10 volt, uh, then the output signal will be at 12.3 volt. And once again, it will uh, reduce like this. So the wave shape will remain as it is. The only change will take place uh, in the value of uh, those peaks. And uh, this, uh, this level, so these two things will be changed. Uh, apart from that, uh, the wave shape will remain as it is. There is no change in the wave shape. So this will give you the potential of 12.3 volt when the input signal is at its positive peak of 10 volt. And so with this, uh, we have uh, come to the end of uh, the tutorial discussion uh, pertaining to uh, the lecture three of electronic circuits, uh, pertaining to the different types of wave shaping circuits involving the diodes and uh, the resistance and uh, the battery DC source. However, uh, initially I have planned uh, to consider uh, the Zener circuits, Zener regulators uh, in this particular tutorial, but uh, because of uh, the time constraint, uh, I think it will not be possible today uh, to complete uh, this uh, discussion on the numerical problems pertaining to the uh, Zener diode or Zener circuits. So that will be hopefully completed in the next tutorial class. Now with this, uh, I would like to uh, conclude today's uh, discussion on the diode circuits.